You'll have to forgive the shades. I lost a pair last week and these are the only others I, that came to hand on this glorious October autumn day here in Bakewell. Uh, it's so balmy warm and sunny I've dropped everything I was doing on my laptop and uh, decided that the priority in my life right now was to go for a walk in this uh, fantastic weather uh, because who knows when we'll get another lovely sunny day like this you know the feeling strike while the weather's hot so to speak and I have also I have to tell you arranged what what I call early doors with my neighbor which means that we go to our favorite local bar at 5 30 on a Friday it's happy Friday today um, um, I've nominated it um, as the happy day of the week uh, I recommend you nominate yours for me it's happy Friday uh, for several counts um, it's not just TFI Friday uh, being the start of the weekend that doesn't uh, that doesn't register with me because frankly <laughs> um, uh, my life is one long weekend some would say uh, I am very very fortunate in this in this regard not that I haven't done a decent morning's work you understand um, I've put uh, a lot of things in motion this morning and um, but uh, also it's Friday is uh, the new releases on Spotify and I have been blasting them out over my morning bagels with uh, orange juice and coffee through my um, vintage Huntley and Palmer sound system which also includes uh, a tea chest with a with a 12 inch bass bin speaker um, and uh, a 200 watt amplifier that's my start of my happy friday it also used to include but but i notice i've dropped off buying the guardian newspaper on a friday i'm going to shift along a bit for the shadows um, because it had uh, new music and film reviews uh, which I always like to see uh, what's new in those departments but what I have uh, what I um, enjoyed with my uh, bagels this morning for breakfast I watched uh, an old uh, well only a four-year-old Jeff Foster video on acceptance um, I've been to uh, several of Jeff Foster's retreats um, one in London which actually I wrote about you can read about it on my the fivepaths.com website under the um, navigation if you go to gurus I've I've written up my uh, my admiration I have to say for this young man Jeff Foster um, I've also been to uh, one of his long weekend retreats in uh, near Utrecht and I find his totally inclusive manner extremely persuasive so um, cutting to the chase so to speak he addresses the question of a lack of peace or anxiety or distress or disturbance in our life and we all know that feeling and he puts his finger on it saying that it the mind tells us uh, this is not what we want from life <laughs> please we don't want uh, disturbance we want peace we don't want stress we want peace we don't want anxiety we want peace and so in itself this sort of creates an, an additional stress or disturbance of its own because it just reinforces uh, the absence of peace that the mind is telling us it can't find 
Are you with me so far? But he points out that it's only the mind telling you that you haven't got the peace that you seek. In fact, the lack of... <laughs> this is great, I love this. The lack of peace can also be accepted wherein you find peace in the lack of peace. You get that? I, I like this sort of paradox. Um, the, the lack of peace or the disturbance or the stress is already fully accepted. Otherwise it wouldn't be there. <laughs> you see, the idea is that um, we take ourselves to be uh, separate little me's um, in our cocoon of mind, mind activity, of how, how we interpret things are. And if it's not going according to the way we'd like it, we call ourselves stressed or anxious or... And of course there are, there are very um, concrete practical reasons why we might be stressed. Uh, I've had some stress this morning because I'm late with my um, limited company confirmation statement and due to the postal strike, you see, I could easily work myself up into a, a stress over a, a blooming piece of paper saying there's been no change since last year and pay them £13, by the way. Uh, same as last year, Phil? Yep. £13, please. Ding. Thank you very much. But um, if you accept the absence of peace, you can be very peaceful about that. And then I was talking to somebody very close to me earlier about this, and I found myself going through uh, a sort of a class register of of people who I am very engaged with in my life, including my brother and uh, best friend and others, important others in my life. And I, um, I reviewed um, the state of the relationship and how it's evolved in recent years. And it was quite remarkable. Uh, you might like to do this in your life with your significant others. And I acknowledged simply without taking any credit for it on my part that in each of them I could say um, accepted. Um, of course, what, whatever, it, whatever it may be that winds me up about them, I could stay in a state of being stressed, anxious, or uh, I must say abused in uh, certain situations, but I can um, surrender it and accept. But I could just think of each person and say, accepted, accepted, accepted. Now, isn't that how we all want to be in this life? We've all got our foibles, things that w wind people up the wrong way, I'm sure. I certainly have. And how better it is to be able to be accepted. I also like this expression, being seen. You, you are seen, not in a perfect light, of course, but you're seen with all your foibles and your irritations, uh, as well as your attractions. Uh, and yet you are still accepted. And I got to thinking um, how it's only because we take ourselves to be separate, as, as George Bernard Shaw calls us, <laughs> separate little clods, wishing the world would uh, dedicate itself to making us happy. Um, that we that we uh, can see ourselves as as being mm, in a state of rejection or agitation with people around us. That's, again, for some, sometimes for a very good reason. You can think of somebody who winds you up the the wrong way. I'm I'm sure of it. 
But if we see ourselves as, um, you know, the leading actors in our story, that's how it appears. But if we sort of can deflate this blow-up character of little me or big me, the me go, um, and see that everything that we are experiencing is already allowed by the awareness, the, the, the centre of our being that we are, is, is sort of, it's closing the, the door after the horse has bolted to get upset and to not accept what already is. It's just another example of, you could say, mistaken identity. Which, for those who are interested, I am um, still in the research and reading stage and I am loving it. But I've gone one step, two, actually I've gone two steps further now since I last mentioned writing mistaken identity. It's not due out imminently, by the way. But I am now registered. I am a student again after 47 years. And I am um, on a consciousness course. Yes, you can study consciousness um, with Aleph Trust, which is affiliated with Liverpool John Moores University. So I am a university student again after 47 years and absolutely loving it. Uh, if it's something you've promised yourself you'll get back to uh, because you love studying or just just uh, uh, playing with the crumbs of ideas in your mind, do it. It's, uh, it's a wonderful uh, opportunity late, late in life, I found. We had a webinar last night uh, and there were about 30 of us, 30 mature students, can you believe, talking for an hour and a half excitedly, believe it or not about consciousness, different aspects of consciousness, and do our beliefs uh, that we may or may not acknowledge we have, uh, does it affect our, our understanding and our study of consciousness as a, shall we say, an academic topic? Anyway, it, it, was, it was really good uh, to get, shall we say, a more rigorous uh, approach to consciousness which of course features at the very core of my book Mistaken Identity uh, which I say is about the ground of being which um, others uh, for example uh, Bernardo Kalstrup which is who we were uh, discussing last night he I call I refer to it as the ground of being he refers to it as cosmic consciousness and that is the only real thing that exists we are if you like sparks of that same cosmic consciousness um, you may wish to think of that as divine or not that's not really the issue it's just what is the ground of being what is the ultimate reality is it matter is it energy? Is it information? Or is it, as uh, Bernardo Castro says, cosmic consciousness? What does he mean by that? Uh, or as um, the lovely Rupert Spira, who visited John and I here a couple of weeks ago, um, said in his uh, daily email this morning, pure awareness and all experience happens in and is made of pure awareness. So all roads lead to the proposition, um, the suggestion that the real basis, undergirding, background of all this beautiful world and us in it is consciousness. Um, for me, that is a, a divine consciousness. There's a lovely verse in the Psalms which says, I'll have to paraphrase, that if God took his eye off the world for a moment, 
it would just disappear. We are held in this benign, loving state of cosmic consciousness. As Saint Paul says in one of his letters, for we have the mind of Christ. And I don't think for a minute he means the mind of Christ is thinking, what shall I drink at early doors in the joiners at 5.30? I don't think that's the mind of Christ. I think it's the mind of Christ in terms of, uh, let's say, um, keeping the laws of physics in place, or the mind of Christ that makes um, mathematics, math as the Americans like to say, um, predictable and reliable that keeps this whole beautiful world in perfect order. So. Um, enjoy your sunshine days. Um, I'm off for a coffee.